Hi, coach. Welcome back to this new episode with my friend Andrew Casal from Valor Accounting Services. Andrew, how are you today? I am very well, Leo. How are you doing? I'm very well, Andrew. Thank you for joining us again on another episode. Um, so today we're going to talk about uh, something that's very common in this industry, and that is uh, business partnerships. So if you're a coach watching, what we're going to be touching on today is uh, tips and strategies and information uh, from the legal, shall we say, side when you take on uh, business partners. Is that correct, Andrew, or, or am I... Uh, Am I going off? No, no, you're good. You're good. We were, we're we going to be talking about, yeah, about an overview, really, of, of mm -hmm. it. And um, and in what kind of circumstances will business coaches want to uh, take on partners and things to look out for as well? Fantastic. Really looking forward uh, to this. So let's get let's get cracking. All right. Brilliant. Brilliant. So, yeah, I think the first thing to talk about is why would any business owner want to you know collaborate or take on partners right and there's a, a variety of reasons and just to kind of point out some of them you know it could be if you're a new business you know and you want to um get access to uh certain um exposure from an established business um this might be quite common you know if you're just starting out Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. another one could be um you know if you're a bit more of an established business or even if you're just starting up you might want to have you know different types of coaches to really complement your business so they could have different coaching styles uh, for example you could take on partners that you know can complement you in the sense that their strength may be your weakness you know yeah, so yeah. so just to give an example if you love the coaching side of running a business, but in terms of the operational side or the admin side, you need a partner to deal with those kinds of things, then you can take on you know, a partner to, to do so, to focus, uh, to allow you to focus more on the coaching side. Um, or if you wanna take a step back from the business and then have a coach um, and you wanna partner up with them in that sense as well. So. Yeah. It, um, is also that and another thing as well could be I know we spoke earlier about in a previous podcast you know taking on staff and this is very much related when you take on partners because you may have a member of staff who has been with you from the beginning and you might want them to have a bit more responsibility maybe have to you know have a, a share in the business mm -hmm. you know and obviously we'll talk on bit more about that uh, another reason why you would want to take on partners is to share resources for example if you've got a sports coach which has access to facilities equipment you can maybe share that with them and if you bring something to the table maybe you've got you know a number of clients or participants you can also share that and that could help you know save costs especially when starting out mm -hmm. so there is um there's there's that option as well and then you've got market expansion you know you may want to access you know new markets customers and a couple of scenarios here is if you want to expand using outside industry uh you know experts for example if you're a football coach mm -hmm. and you want to you know if here's a good example if you're a football coach and let's say you teach kids right you may have a Zoom instructor who teaches, you know, strength and conditioning mm -hmm. for adults. Mm -hmm. So a good collaboration would be during the time where the kids are being taught, the parents can then do a strength and conditioning class yeah. in maybe the same vicinity. Um, you know, that, that might be something. So that's kind of outside industry. Inside the industry, for example, if you're a football coach and you want to partner up, for example, a goalkeeping specialist, Mm -hmm. That can also happen as well. So that's kind of an overview yeah. of it. Love that. Yeah. And this kind of goes into what uh, a conversation I had with a coach the uh, last week. He has a, a soccer academy. And what he does in the summer is he partners with another business to run a summer league. 
So because he, he's got X amount of clients, he partners up with another company who has X amount of clients. And what they do is they run like a 4v4, 5v5 summer league. So when okay. his teams aren't uh, playing in, in matches, because the summer usually is when nothing happens, the league is finished, they, they team up and do like a 10-week summer league. So yeah. that's a great example of what we're talking about today, collaborating with another business to run uh, something and leveraging off each other. Definitely, yeah. And then actually, you know, off the back of that, it's a question of, okay, how do they do that? How, how does actually, what are the kind of intricacies around that? Mm -hmm. So there's a number of options, which, you know, I think, to be honest, you know, uh, we could really have a separate, we could really have a separate uh, podcast for each one of these, but <laughs> yeah, I'll go over them. <laughs> so, you know, the first one, the most simplest form is, you know, subcontracting. So this is more related to, let's say, for example, you uh, you teach specific clients at a facility or at a gym, for example, mm -hmm. and you maybe have need cover. So you get an instructor to cover for you, uh, a sports instructor, then what might happen is that the gym will pay that that instructor instead of yourself. So there's actually no money being transferred between you, the business, mm -hmm. and that subcontractor. The gym, the facility just pays them instead of them paying you. That's kind of the most simplest way. And, you know, normally gyms, uh, facilities may ask you as the business owner, who do you recommend if, yeah. you know, you need cover? So that's a kind of very loose way of having a, a partner, someone that you know, is good has a good quality of teaching and maybe teaching the same way that you do that the clients or the participants you know they're not losing too much out on you know the business owner teaching teaching them uh, someone who's a similar kind of teaching style for example yeah. another one is commission basis so this is an example where you may like combine the clients participants and one business for example, collects the earnings and then the other business that took part then invoices them. Mm -hmm. So then they, you know, and it will be an agreed amount, for example, and just invoices them um, after, for example, and then that business who collected those earnings then pays them as an expense from their business. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Brilliant. Then we've got another situation and it kind of touches on like the staff side mm -hmm. of things where you know if you've got the, uh, a member of staff that has been with you for a while and you want them to have a little bit more responsibility you can you know you can essentially have them as an associate director mm -hmm. or another way is have them as an actual director so a bit of a difference here an associate director isn't really a term which is used within you know, the company, when you submit your year-end accounts, mm -hmm. an associate director won't be, you know, named as a director. However, it is just to denote responsibility. Mm -hmm. If you are an actual company director, that will just be, you know, that will, will come under your, your accounts for submission. Yeah. And it would show the number of the directors there. And as well, it is just to denote that this, uh, you know, member of staff, has taken on a certain level of responsibility, which can be considered a partner of that business. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, and now we're gonna look at a joint venture. So this is an example where you may have two sports coaches that have just started out and they just wanna form a separate legal entity, or they could be two established businesses and they are, they are you know, setting up a separate business uh, entity to what they already have yeah. you know and um that could be you know providing maybe they want to just not have all their streams of income in one business and you know especially if it's if it's a business partner which they you know they obviously know very well but they want to have things separate and it could be something might be different you know in terms of could be merchandising if you're a sports coach and you're you know you may want to form a separate company which just deals with merchandising and you partner up with someone who specializes in that. Mm -hmm. Okay, a strategic alliance. Now, this is 
a bit more formal than the commission basis, which we spoke about, but it's less formal than a joint venture. And essentially a strategic alliance is having an agreement in place. Yeah. And this could be, yeah. you know, over a six month basis, it could be a permanent work or it could be just consistent work, you know, a uh, number of days during the week over six months. So there's that option as well. Another option we've got is licensing, uh, franchising. So this could be where you're collaborating with another business where they are giving you exclusive use, exclusive rights to certain products, services, could be things from, you know, sports, uh, sports bottles. Mm -hmm. And you're, you have exclusive rights to use that and sell that uh, alongside your sports coaching business. And they usually do it for a set period of time. And it would be a fee that they would charge. And there's obviously a number of different free fee structures and mm. obviously very, very good idea to read the uh, the agreement before signing it. But yeah, that's kind of uh, licensing uh, right. in a nutshell. Mm. And then we've got, you know, we've got shareholders. Now, this is uh, this, this is when you take on a, a member. Uh, they're, they're called members and of your company and they have a certain shareholding of the company. So mm. they could own 10% of that company. They could own 20%, 50%, whatever it may be. And the way that they get paid would be maybe a salary. They get paid for a salary or they could get paid dividends, which is essentially profits taken from the business and then paid out um, equally or in a different way. Uh, obviously, shareholders can be a completely different podcast, but yeah. that's another way. And finally, we've got percentage of profits or turnover. And that can be that as well is down to the commercial agreement of what's going on. So, for example, if you're starting out, you may want to have an agreement where a certain percentage of your profits or turnover will be um given to your partner yeah. and you know these th these ones are and we go actually we'll, we'll go on to things to look out for but mm -hmm. these can be quite good to start off with but can end up being a bit more detrimental going on especially if you're very successful but that's just the options in a nutshell <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah no i like them some really good information there um i always i always whenever i speak to coaches that and and this this partnership topic comes up uh, i always say the same thing it's like you've got to make sure that any partnership you do form it has to be strategic um a lot of coaches when they're starting up they want to they want to form these partnerships because they think that that's that's the the road to success um which sometimes it can be but i think it only works if you partner with someone or a product or a service or something that you you add value together. Um, so something that I do well, and this is something you talked about uh, just, just now, something that I do well that he does well or she does well. And how can we combine the two to make it work? If you're just com uh, combining or partnering with someone and you do exactly the same thing, then you've really got to think about, is this really strategic and is this really going to grow and, and take my business to the next level? Yeah, correct. And and also, it's not to say that, you know, you choose one option and they mm. become a, like a shareholder, for example. You could start off as on a commission basis and see how that relationship develops. Yeah. And as you mentioned, if they complement um, like your skill set, then and they seem like an asset to the business, bring them on you know bring them on it instills loyalty as well yeah. right instills loyalty and um could definitely help your business to grow in the long run mm -hmm. 100 all right perfect andrew uh to sum yeah, up we've got a little bit more we've got a little bit oh, more oh fantastic sorry no, no, no worries <laughs> at all. now the, these, these are just you know little things to look out for you're spoiling right? our audience i know I know, I know. <laughs> but um, but yeah, you know, things to look out for is if you're on a commission basis, right? And you're just keeping to that, 
what that means is that you're having income coming into your business and then the your partner is invoicing you right yeah. so that'll be an expense for your business but what's happening is that as your business is going to be taking on a lot of that income that, that turnover as mm. itself so what that means is not necessarily inflate your your income figure but what would it do is it was it will you will reach your VAT threshold a lot quicker. And that is another thing, but essentially you have to be VAT registered if you go over a certain threshold. Currently yeah. it's 85K uh, over the year. Now, if you're on a commission, if you're doing commission basis uh, work with a partner and you're taking all of the income, you're going to reach that VAT threshold a lot higher. So yeah. before you get there, it might be worth considering doing a different partnership model because then when VAT VAT comes in, you're essentially paying extra tax. Mm. Um, so you may want to consider a different partnership model at that point. You know, facilities, you gave a really good example, Leo, about, you know, having facilities partner up with, you mentioned someone who partnered up with someone who provided facility. Um, it was it was a pitch, I believe, and it was a long-term thing. Do you remember that at all, Leo? What we yeah. spoke about last week, yeah. Yeah, this was this was off air, wasn't it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, for those watching, basically, again, another conversation I had with a coach that he was starting up. Uh, he was a part. He was he was living in in a, an area in the US where in the winter you have to be indoors because just because of the weather, uh, it snows a lot, so it's virtually impossible to be outside. And something he was struggling with, he was struggling with finding a facility. So what he did is he partnered up with a facility and basically they weren't charging him any rent. It was just a case of they were taking a percentage of every customer that he was bringing in. Now, the problem that he then had was that as his business started to grow, what he was giving that facility was a lot more than if he would well, if he was paying an hourly fee to them okay so that's just another example of of uh, taking on partners or partnering up with a, a facility yeah yeah that's right and um and just as well just to end a couple of other things is you know commercial agreements as you mentioned mm. it's maybe beneficial at the start but long term especially if they're taking a certain percentage you know yeah. Uh, of your turnover your profit you know that could be quite quite detrimental to your business because it might not allow your business to grow because yeah. you're giving a certain percentage of the way and then another thing with shareholders you know if there is if there is a dispute and you've got you know shareholders which have got a 50 50 split what happens when there's a dispute and the business breaks up and they own equally uh, equal shareholdings of the of the business this is where something called a shareholders agreement comes in. And this is a little bit outside, you know, this is more the legal side of it where you'd need a solicitor to help draft one up. But it is definitely something to consider if you're going down that route, because there are a lot of examples where it's a 50 50 split. Who decides what what happens? You know, yeah. and this is where a shareholders agreement comes in, where in that case that does happen. It's it's something that they can use uh, to guide that that process, which can be quite difficult. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah i love it perfect okay uh, anything else that's to add it. andrew <laughs> no that's it that's it from me <laughs> all right i'm going to put you on the spot again so to sum it up to sum this episode up how would you sum it up yeah to sum up i'd say look if you're a if you're a sports coach and you're looking to partner up think of think of where you want where you want to go with, mm -hmm. with this particular partner what do you need in your business and really discuss with them communicate with them the ways of how you're going to be dividing up the income um, ways of the partnership speak to professionals you know speak to people in the community if you've got a community of sports coaches how do they do it yeah and speak to an accountant who could on could if, especially from the shareholders side of things you know you've got to speak to these types of advisors so you know long term that you know you're in safe hands like that love that yeah and and i I'd, I'd like to add something as well that like like i mentioned previously a lot of coaches at the beginning 
it's as though they don't believe in themselves. So that's why they 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 feel that if they partner with someone or they buy a franchise or invest into a franchise, that's gonna that's the road to success. Uh, but sometimes it's just believing in yourself, having a you know a roadmap to how you're gonna get there, and just implementing. Okay, and a lot of the times you realize that you don't even need to partner or bring on partners until you get to a stage where then it's, a, you know, you kind of need it because you've grown and scaled. Uh, but any coach watching and if you're at the beginning phases, right, just believe in yourself. It, do, it does take time to grow. Um, and if you do partner or bring someone on, then just make sure that it adds value to what you do. And it's something that you can't do that you, the, the reason why you're bringing them in is because you absolutely need them in order to add value to your program or or to to get to the next level love that yeah <laughs> all right andrew fantastic thank you again for for coming on uh I, a lot of the things we we talked about today we could make a a separate podcast uh, which we probably will do at some point and go deeper into into it but thanks again and look forward to to connecting with you on the next one last one thanks leo